Hey, we're up to another part of our interview with Lawrence Galvin, lead singer of Styx. And on this one, appropriately, since he's a keyboard player, we talk about his favorites, including Mike Pinder. We talk about the Moody Blues a little bit. And all the guys on keys that really brought him or helped him to get where he's at now on Rock History Music. I just talked to the Moody Blues guys, John and Justin, and they were talking about oh. Mike Pinder and the Mel. You know, the, of course, he's known yeah. for like first guy yeah. on the Mellotron. Yeah. Uh, and and they just said he was like obsessed. He was he was it, it, it was like the biggest toy of toys for him, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, the Moody Blues, I mean, so much of their sound came down to what, how the Mellotron could expand the whole horizon of, of what they were what they were doing, you know, and uh, I, I believe that I. I don't know if they used it before the Beatles, but I know the Beatles were very impressed with with how they used it. I know Paul McCartney was for sure. And uh, yeah, it's a great clunky old machine. Tony Banks, as a keyboardist, how do you how do you look at? I mean, you were a Genesis fan, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so so my my favorite keyboard players of that era were, of course, you know, uh, piano player wise were Elton John and Burton Cummings. I really like Burton Cummings piano playing, and. Uh, but then as I got into keyboard players, Wakeman was the top, Emerson, Tony Banks. Okay, so those those three. And over the longevity of time, I, I still love all three, but Tony Banks, his incredible, endless, melodic sense just floors me to this day. We were just discussing it again last night. You know, it just it's it's this endless, almost Mozart level of mm -hmm melodic sensitivity and, and knowing where where a piece should go next and how to what to put in there it, it, he's he's just a, a phenomenon and and speaking of genesis yeah i mean bill bruford on that tour the most recent show i saw with nick collins on the drums oh my god so good just so good what an experience that sticks albums you guys were you're you're head first in there you're you're like co you're co-writing every every single one of the 14 15 songs yeah uh well on this album there were oh boy uh well i, I think there's 12 i think there's 11 on there actually and it's you know it's a vinyl album that's um 40 minutes long we we went we went right back to that format of uh making sure that it fits on a yeah on a vinyl album and uh yeah i co-write most of the songs yeah most of the, the title track was uh i had a great uh influence on that one in, in the in the bits that i put into that into crash of the crown and yeah that's i'm glad you're saying this because that's that's something that a lot of people in canada might not be aware of is that that album our latest album crash of the crown got to number one on billboard's rock album chart so that is uh a, 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 to me it's a pretty uh amazing feat for a band that's been around for over half a century to be able to pull that off and we we did the, the vocals the lyrics the production uh and i know it got a lot of good reviews i had to imagine what sticks would sound like today it's that album that's i i couldn't i couldn't ask for a better review because that's precisely what we were trying that's what we were going for we started on on the mission in 2017 we decided okay the digital era that we live in is wonderful for for playing live music it, it has revolutionized things i wouldn't even dream of going on stage and not playing a digital piano because they sound so great through the pa however if you want to make a record that sounds authentic classic rock you have to basically use the clunky old machinery that's still around from the 70s or 60s and uh, it's it's painstaking because but luckily there are studios now and we found one in one in nashville and blackbird where they have all that gear they have the expertise and guys that know how to fix it because that's that's usually what crops up every few hours and you suddenly notice that by getting away from your phones no laptops let's just use that technology let's get five guys in the room together at the same time and bash these songs out and come up with the arrangements here with um with a producer that is that is in a control room with an engineer and and begin to really formulate how this is going to sound and record it to tape when all those elements are in line suddenly we would put we'd be listening to what we're doing and then listen to grand illusion and then go back to what we're doing and going 
Okay, they're beginning to they're beginning to balance up. The second or third song, the keyboards are right in the beginning, and yeah. it's really retro. I, I I remember going, "Wow!" Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I I um, now I'm happy with that too. Actually, no, luckily I've 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 I kept a few of my vintage keyboards from even back in the '70s, but uh, actually no, maybe maybe about two of them. And then I started buying them again, you know, and they're they're astronomically expensive now. Did you have a DX7 or do you do you still have a do you have a DX7? Because everyone had one back then. Yes, I had a DX7. Don't use that one because that one came out in the 80s and it came out post Sticks basically biggest albums. Okay, so I tried to go, okay, don't stay away from like mid-80s keyboards, etc. You know, what the ones that I used on the gallon records because they're 80s sounding keyboards and uh instead i went to using like usually oberheim uh key uh synthesizers obviously hammond b3 steinway grand piano and though that's the the, the the bulk of what we use and then i got a I got a vintage mellotron and i used that quite a bit on on crash of the crown as well so that's the, that's the that's those are the basic keyboards that i used and then live I use all Roland keyboards that are all digital and they sound because they can, they, they have analog wavelengths, et cetera. So they sound very authentic as well. Remember you can help the channel by donating. There's a PayPal link at the very top of the description. Also join our Patreon. You will get early access to all our videos and we have a swag store. You can pick up a lot of merchandise, a lot of clothing with our logos on links again in the description. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos, like them, and comment on them. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.